Good morning. This is the day that our King Jesus made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Come what may, we're going to pray. Come what may, we're going to trust in the Lord with all our heart and lean not on our own understanding. In all of our ways, day by day, year by year, decade by decade, we're going to honor him and he will direct our path. So this morning I was reading in 1 Kings and um, Elijah departs and he's all alone. It's, I believe it's 1 Kings 19. And there was a great wind, but the God, but God was not in the wind. And there was a great earthquake, but God was not in the earthquake. And then there was a great fire, but God was not in the fire. He was in the still small voice. So I was reading this Charles Stanley commentary on that verse. And he was saying that when we pray, we do a lot of talking, but that we also need to do listening. And I go, gosh, Lord, that is always the hardest part of prayer, you know, just sitting quietly before the Lord and letting him speak back to us letting him speak a word over us or sing a song over us or encourage us or even give us a word picture you know years ago I was driving in my car and I was just thinking about Jesus and his love and just you know thinking about heaven and I saw a dad pushing his little baby girl in a swing and gosh she must have been 18 months you know maybe just a little over one and um you know how when you push someone you push them from behind well this dad was pushing from the front because she was just a little bitty thing and i thought that's what heaven is like we're smiling and we're looking at our dad our father in heaven our abba and he's giving us joy and delight relax. in his presence relax yeah hi hi neck tim Two tummies. Go up there. Go up there. So, anyway, um, just to sometimes be still, you know, we read our Bible and, and, and meditate on Him and not rush so quick to our to-do list, but just stop and ponder and think on these things. Think on what is good and noble and true. And I was thinking about our prayer times together and... You know, honestly, I do feel a little bit rushed because I'm here with Isaac at the park. And, well, not always. Sometimes I'm in the car. You guys know that. But, um, I have Isaac. So, I'm not totally able to give my full attention to the task of prayer. But God said, where two or more are gathered, he's in our midst. And, you know, remember that one time in Acts when, uh, I think Paul was preaching and one guy fell asleep and fell through the window. You know, we're human. We get distracted. We get sleepy. We get hungry. Um, but still, we're going to pray nonetheless. And we're going to give thanks, as the Bible says, and everything give thanks. But I want to pause more in prayer and let the Holy Spirit have margin to room. Margin or room for you to lift up your own prayers um, as we pray together. So, Lord, I thank you for this beautiful day. It is a gorgeous spring day. It feels like summer, but we know that it's not quite summer yet. It's spring, and you created all the seasons, winter, fall, spring, and summer, and they're all for your delight, God. You create plants and the whole solar system and animals and the ocean and the rivers and the mountains and the glaciers and ladybugs and people and um, communities of people, everything, all creation praises you. Your word says that everything that has breath praise the Lord. Your word says that the trees of the hills clap together. When you were walking or actually riding on the donkey through Jerusalem, they sang out, Hosanna, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. And the Pharisees and Sadducees said, rebuke these people for praising you. And you said, if they don't praise me, even the rocks will cry out. So if the rocks cry out your praises, if the ocean roars your name, if the sun, the moon, the stars, the galaxies, all of creation, even birds sing to you, flowers, they open in delight when the sun comes up in the morning. If all creation praises you, we will praise you, Lord. We will choose to be still and know that you are the Lord, that you are God. You are God most high. You are God on high. You are the Lord of heaven and earth. 
everything above the earth and under the earth. And we just praise you and bless you. Thank you for the kingdom work that you're doing, God. You are God. You are Abba. You are our rock. You are the God of our future. You promise to give us a future and a hope. And even when things seem so dark and so painful and so hard, you never fail us. You never leave us. You work all things, even the harshest of circumstances, together for our good and for your glory and for your pleasure, Lord. Glory, glory, glory to the Lamb who was slain. Worthy, worthy, worthy to the one who is able to open the scroll, Lord. You alone, Jesus, are wise. You are our high priest and intercessor. You're Elkanah, jealous God. You're jealous for our love. You don't want us to give our delight or our love or our devotion to any other, not even to a spouse or to family or to a ministry or to any good thing, to a career, to anything, a hobby. You alone want our soul attention and our heart. So help us to worship you with a pure heart, with an undivided heart, Lord God. And dear Jesus, I just want to stop and pause and pray so we can hear your voice of what your spirit is speaking to us right now, Lord. Heavenly Father, when the disciples were in the upper room, you told them to wait, to wait for the Holy Spirit to come. And you, Holy Spirit, did come. And you said in John 14, Jesus, that you would not leave us orphans, but you would send a helper, the paracletus, the one to walk alongside us, our tutor, our coach, our mentor, the Holy Spirit to be our guide. We need you, Holy Spirit. We need thee, oh how we need thee, every hour we need thee, we need thee, Lord Jesus. Breathe on us, breath of God. Help us to be still and know you are God, not to rush through our prayer time, not to rush through our reading time, not to rush through our fellowship time, but to relish in it, to anoint your feet with our tears, to anoint your feet with our praises, God. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty who was and is and is to come, Lord. Father, we want to pray for prodigals right now, and we want to lift them up by name. I pray, dear God, for my family members who are lost, who are backslidden, who don't know you, or who've walked away from you. You know them by name. Let's lift them up by name. Right now, you can say it out loud, or you could say it silently. We're praying for prodigals. Hmm. Father, you left the 99 for the one, for the lost soul. And you are able to save the lost ones that we're thinking on right now. Even if we don't say their name out loud, you know, God, you know who's on our heart, Jesus. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Give us opportunities to minister to these prodigals, to minister to the lost, to be the hands and feet of you, King Jesus. Father, forgive us of our sins, Lord. Forgive us of pride, of stubbornness, of selfishness, of thinking we have it all together. Or even when we think we know we don't have it together, we're neglectful to ask for help. I know that's me, Father. I don't always ask for help and I need help. I need your help first and foremost. Like it says in Psalm 121, I lift my eyes to the mountains. Where does my help come from? My help comes from you, the maker of the heavens and earth. But I also need help from people. Help from my husband, from my mom, from friends, from family, from precious people that text me scriptures. I need help. We all need help. We're a community of believers, Lord. Your word says we're to bear each other's burdens, God. And I want to pray for the sick right now. And I pray that we would just lift up by name those that are sick. I lift up Tim Kruger. I lift up Kathy's husband, Robert. I lift up Christina Wolf. I lift up Riley, our neighbor young man 15 years old with leukemia god you're bigger than cancer you're greater than any disease ailment 
I pray for Eunice, um, Shami's husband, your beloved son, who battles Parkinson's. And daily it's hard. Some days are better than others. I pray for those battling Lyme disease, battling autism, battling mental health issues, battling struggles that no one knows the depths of them but you. For Sandy's friend, Gloria, Lord, be with her, God. You are the medicine that she needs. You're the balm in Gilead, Lord. Be with Isaac. Touch his mind. Remove anxious thoughts, anxious worries from him, God. Unscrunch his face and make him calm. Like when he goes swimming, he's calm. Would you be that cup of cold water to Isaac, Lord? You're the living water. You're everything we need. You're the bread of life, the manna from heaven. Help us not to complain. When we go through trials and testings, God, when we have a pounding headache, or when we sob and fall asleep in tears, help us not to complain. But to know that your word says in John 14, let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. You believe in God, believe also in me and my father's house are many mansions. And I go to prepare a place for you that where I am there you may be also. Thank you God for summertime and Father for the many, many blessings that come in summer. Kids and teachers are off from work and school. Families go on vacations. It's sunshine longer so people can go on walks or have bonfires at night, make s'mores, look at the stars and just enjoy the season of summer, Lord. Help us to enjoy all that you have for us, the beautiful jasmine smell. The scents of spring are everywhere, God. Thank you for that. The beautiful birds that are singing, Lord. We just thank you for all good gifts, Lord. Every good and perfect gift comes from you. Lord, I know many, many people that are going through painful seasons and testings, and I pray that we would come forth as gold, Lord. Father, help us not to be like Job's friends and to point the fingers to say, you must have done wrong, or you made this bed, now you must lie in it. Help us not, not to be like that, not to be judgmental or critical, but to be kind and compassionate, for you are kind and compassionate and grace-filled. Help us know when to speak and when to be silent. Father, for those that are wrestling with big decisions, Father, as I know two of my precious sisters in Christ are moving, Lisa to Idaho and Kimberly to Texas, would you bless their journeys? Many, many people are going through big, big decisions big big seasons of change kids going off to college lord spouses that have left the home and they're separated father give them wisdom the people that i'm thinking on right now by name be with those that need wisdom pray for those that need wisdom right now my friends lift them up by name Jesus, your word says that you're a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path, that you are Logos, the living word of God, and you give us a Rema word, a specific word. Jesus, we want to build upon that intimacy. When we became saved, your Holy Spirit ignited us and delighted us, and we need your Holy Spirit and your word to be that lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path for every single day, God. The days are long and hard, but you're coming again. Maranatha, come quickly, Lord Jesus. Holy Spirit, Illuminate our eyes. Help us to see as you see. Give us opportunities to be there for the weak, the sick, the wounded, the hurting, the broken. We love you, God. You are the friend that sticks closer than a brother. You are the Lamb of God. You are the bridegroom, Jesus. Come quickly for your bride. We're ready. And forgive us of our sins. And may we be found faultless when you come, Jesus. Yes, we're sinners in the process of sanctification, but we know that you're coming. Help us to be a bride that's ready. We love you, Jesus. In your name, we exalt you and we praise you in your name. Amen. God bless you guys.